everyone and welcome. As you can tell by the title, we are here to talk about City of Heavenly Fire by Cassandra Clare. I'm finally finishing up with these book talks that I was I should have done a long time ago. So let's talk about how this book opens with our characters from Lady Midnight, Lord of Shut from the Dark Artifices series, Emma and all the Blackthorn children. I love Emma, she's so badass. Even at 12, 12 years old? And Julian, I knew from this, I knew from this book that then becoming Parabata at the end was a bad idea, which is why when Lady Midnight came out and they were actually Parabata, I was like, excuse me, no. <laughs> that was bad. You guys are, do not love each other like Parabata, Parabata. You love each other like actual love not like brother and sister so when that happened at the end i was really livid i was like cassie why did you do this so jason's heavenly fire is out of control well after the fiasco with the car with the blackthorns we go to jace meditating and it's great i love being opened up to jordan being like picture something calming the beach in Los Angeles, white sand, crashing blue water. You're strolling along the tide line. And then Jace is just like, this sounds very romantic. And then Jordan's like, well, what kind of thing does make you feel calm and peaceful? And Jace is just like, killing demons. A good clean kill is very relaxing. The messy ones are more annoying because you have to clean up afterward. And honestly, how could Jordan think of anything? expect anything else because Jace is a shadow hunter. He was raised by Valentine. He knows only killing. <laughs> killing demons and weapons. You can't expect anything else from Jace. But it's an attempt to calm down the heavenly fire running through his veins. So at least Jordan's trying to help with that. Speaking of Jordan, let's just talk about how he's killed by Sebastian in this. Like, I wasn't too attached to Jordan, but also, it's not, it's not nice. <laughs> like, Sebastian needs to not, Sebastian needs to stop with just killing. It's all he does. But I wasn't too attached to Jordan, so his death wasn't too horrible. Maureen kidnapping Simon and then putting him <laughs> tight leather pants and a poofy white shirt. <laughs> I can't get over that. <laughs> I forgot that when I was rereading this and listening to the audiobook, I actually forgot about that. And then I just broke down laughing because I remembered, oh right. <laughs> and then when Raphael takes him to Idris and Simon shows up in front of Isabel with this shirt, <laughs> With this whole get up on and they do the whole Lord Montgomery. That's some of the parts that just make me laugh the most. So I love the piece with Yes for Us and Clary claiming the blade is her own, naming it and blessing it and everything. And then they go to the Adamant Citadel to fight off Sebastian's forces, even though they're not 18, so they're technically not allowed. And then Jace is badly injured. Clara uses up all her energy to heal Jace. My chest hurt from how fast my heart was racing during all of that. Even though I have read these books so many times, there are a lot of things that still get my heart just racing, which is mostly things where anyone any of the characters that I care about, like Jace, Clary, Isabel, Simon, Alec, Magnus, just any of them. <laughs> getting hurt. Just like, no, no. And then after that, when Jace goes, gets free from the Basilius, which is Shadowhunter Hospital, and finds a guard under a bridge while Sebastian is continuing to basically molest Clary again. After that, Sebastian wanting the clave to give Jace and Clary over for the downward representatives, because Meliorn is a fairy who can lie. <laughs> and how and so he got all of the downward representatives to a demon dimension called Edom, which is hell. 
And it's also where Magnus's father reigns supreme, and Magnus's father is making him sick the entire time. Even though the clave will decide against it, Clary, Jace, Alec, Isabel, Simon, they all decide to go to the demon dimension without the clave's approval. So Clary makes a portal, they go through the fairy entrance there, and my god, they go to hell basically. After Meliorn is killed, I love that Meliorn was killed. Isabel nearly dies, but Simon gives her his blood so she could live, and it's great, and I love it. Jace nearly burns out. Uh, Clary saves him, obviously, with the City of Heavenly Fire, <laughs> with the Heavenly Fire rune onto her blade Heusphros, and no one knows except them. Clary and Jace have some great sexy time, <laughs> and Jace, for some reason, even though he had the Heavenly Fire in him, he brought a condom to hell. <laughs> he brought a condom to the demon dimension. <laughs> where they were likely gonna die. That's some optimism right there. I'm never gonna stop laughing at the fact that Jace brought a condom to hell. And then also at the same time, Simon and Isabel are having so, are having a moment and um, Alec, for the second time in this book, walks in on them. So he walks in on them and there's, and he drops a wine bottle and <laughs> just shouts, why does this keep happening? Why can't you go somewhere else to do these horrible things? My eyes! I love it. And I love how Alex says straight people. Why can't they control themselves? Some of the best lines in this book, and it's great. Yeah, let's talk about Raphael. Raphael dies in this book. Simon feels it because he's his sire. And... Like, I didn't like Raphael to begin with, but he didn't deserve to die. Let's talk about Sebastian's death. You know, when I was first reading this, I was like, yes, yeah, Sebastian deserves to die. What? How the hell did Cassandra Clare manage to make me feel something for a character I hated so much it made my blood boil? Very few authors can do that, but I actually felt something when Sebastian died. When the heavenly fire consumed him and his eyes turned green, I was like, oh no, I, I don't want to see this. The death of the boy who should have been Jocelyn's son. Why, Cassandra Clare? Why do this to me? Why do this to the fandom? Just why? Just kill him and be done with it. Don't make it so long. Also, he survived for such a long time with the heavenly fire burning him up. Granted, he made sure that the cup was destroyed, so he did one good thing. So the real Sebastian, the real Jonathan is amazing. He's great. Ugh. He was the brother that she should have had. Just like, why? Why do this to me? Why? Just, just don't. Leave me, leave my feelings alone, please. But now I guess I have no other choice but to mention the other heartbreaking thing that actually moved me to tears, which is very difficult to do. Simon giving up his immortality as a daylighter and his memories of the shadow world and Clary. <laughs> that was heartbreaking. And when Clary went up to him and he didn't remember her, I, I really did want to cry. Because he names his band the Mortal Instruments, Magnus gives him a choice to either not remember anything or ascend to be a shadow hunter, and he chooses to ascend, and I love it. And, mm, <laughs> but of course, he doesn't have his memories. He's not the same person, but he's still Simon. At least... At, the, at Jocelyn and Luke's wedding, which finally happened, he remembers bits and pieces. Still, it broke my heart that he sacrificed himself for everyone. Because it was either him or Magnus. Magnus would have died, he wouldn't have. 
that was actually the most heartbreaking thing in the entire uh, book. And I was just like, mm, no, no, don't cry, don't cry. Also, Jace chooses to become a full Harrendale. He, he's not shunning his name anymore, which, good for him. Good. If he kept shunning his name, I might have found a way to just jump into a book jump into the book and slap the shit out of him. It's a Harrendale name. It's great. All Harrendale men are great. Except maybe his father. May I don't know. I don't I don't know Stephen Harrendale that much. That well. <laughs> yeah, uh the Clave's decisions. Because the fairies were in league with Sebastian, the Clave now has to punish them, so there is now the cold peace. Where fairies are restricted heavily and of course Magnus objects because we all know from mundane history that this kind of thing isn't gonna go well this kind of thing will actually make everything worse as for Helen being sent to Wrangell Island to study the wards she's she's still a shadow hunter and she fought against the fairy's like, she shouldn't be exiled. I have a problem with the clave's methods of handling this. Just because they're part, just because she's part fairy along with Mark, and that's why they're deceasing the start, the negotiations to get him back, makes me want to bash my head into a wall. I know there's a perfectly good wall here, but there's also a TV here, so I can't deal with it. They're shadow hunters. They don't have no allegiance with the Fae. Let them be. Give Mark back. I hate it. I, I hated every decision at the end of this book by the Clave. The cold piece, the, the seizing to get Mark back, and just Emma and Julian deciding to be Pervati, and Helen being shipped off to Wrangell Island. It's all just awful. Just awful entirely. Let's just talk about something that's more inviting, more appealing. Jem and Jess. Now Jem, who was Brother Zachariah, is now back to Jem. And I love it. It's great. Mm. Jem is back to being human. He's cured. And I'm sorry if you haven't read The Emerald of Isis. I'm about to I'm about to spoil so much. I'm about to spoil a lot for the Infernal Devices because Jem, Jem is amazing. I love him. I like how he's not dependent on Yin, Fei, Yin Fen anymore and ah, and Jessa can now be a thing just like Wes it was. And I like how Tessa was the warlock who stood in for the Iron Sister and Jem was the brother who stood in was the silent brother for Clary's ceremony and then how Jocelyn used Tess's last name but changed out the G in gray for F to make Clary's fake last name. It was, it was great. I loved it and oh my god I can't deal with it. So many feels. Also Jem taking church, I love it. Jem is the only one who can touch church and church won't give an attitude. Anyways, I believe that's everything I wanted to talk about for City of Heavenly Fire. I hope all of this made sense. Like the video if you liked it and subscribe and ring that notification bell if you want to be notified for when I upload more book talks on Cassandra Clare's books or any other books because I have a lot of book talks that I'm going to be uploading real soon. So hope you have a good day, night, whatever time you're watching this, and I will see you all in the next video. Bye bye!